Okay, Madam Chair Pissim, yes, introduce myself. Um, yes, I'm Pierre Andre, and um, yeah, we'll be looking at the wine industry. We at this stage is the biggest um, fruit or industry in South Africa. Um, we just nar narrowly bigger than the citrus industry, which um, Mr. Anton Rabo also um, alluded to. So yeah, we're gonna start off. So yeah, um, I'm a agriculture economist and um, primarily involved in primary production. Um, so I represent um, grape farm producers. So we'll be, be starting off with, a, with an overview specifically on wine in the wine industry. Um, and we'll be looking at economics of wine grape production and then I'll just um, allude to an industry organizational structure of a wine industry, um, similar as what Orco did, and um, just who is Vinpro at the end. So to start off, just to put it in perspective, um, historically, um, the slide I borrowed one of my colleagues as well. Um, so historically, uh, we, South Africa was a Dutch and then later a, a British colony. Um, so Jan van Riebeek um, came to South Africa in April 1652. It's actually nearly the same date which we are on today. And um, yes, and then a few years later, the first um, vines were planted here, of which um, Scott Alexandri, or Hannepoort, which we call in South Africa, was one of the varieties. Um, so yeah, and then a few years later, the first wines were, 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 were produced. Um, at a stage, most of the wine actually went to the British fleet. And yes, so the British, it was British ruled. And then actually the big thing, as most of the guys in India are, are um, plant pathologists or breeders, in the 1866, the phylloxera epidemic um, came to South Africa. Before that, we were able to cultivate grape wine, wines on um, their own rootstock. Um, unfortunately, with that epidemic, um, that was polluted. And yes, if we talk about grape vine varieties, we're talking about Vitis vinifera, not your American or Labrisca types. And um, yes, so then later, um, we had a big regulation system in South Africa with a lot of fruit um, systems, which was a formation of KWV, a quota system that was disbanded um, in the early 90s. But nonetheless, I want to point out to, to 1924, Prof. Perold, who actually also promulgated um, a cultivar we call Pinotage, which was South African cultivar. And then just by the end of the early 90s, um, what percentage of our grape vines were actually for wine, and 10 years later, what was actually, how, how big that did increase, and um, yes, so I've got a logo on the left, which is Vetitech, which is actually a subsidiary of us as well, which after this epidemic has come, so we, we've got a, also, within the industry, a strong focus on clonal development, um, on virus elimination and propagation. I'll allude to some of those challenges later, but yes, that's just to start off. So if we look at the value chain, um, we're roughly 3,000 producers, um, 94,000 hectares, and we produce 1.25 million tons of wine grapes. Um, that is, um, obviously the grapes then is, is, is 540 sellers, um, of which the biggest um, 50 sellers is about 75% of all harvest, is, is, it goes through them. And then our, our, there's about 30, 30 buyers who, who buy 75% of the crop, of which the biggest three is nearly about 50% of the market. So we've got a very big uh, monopolistic um, on the buy side, and then on the export side, um, 50 of the brands is nearly 80% of the value, although there's a, a variety of um, labels out there. And then in the industry itself, um, so we've got about 60,000 employment opportunities on, on wine farms and in sellers, and beyond the farm gates, obviously alluded to wine tourism and a lot of other um, employment opportunities further along the value chain, we just under 300,000 opportunities. So for, 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 for job creation, it's, a, it's an important industry in South Africa. And just to put it in extent, we are the 14th largest area under wine grapes in the world. Um, of those wine grapes, um, not everything goes actually into wine. 82% um, of it is, is used for wine production, brandy and um, concentrate is our others. And, Obviously, I'm alluding to Vitis vinifera types as well. It's the only variety we allow to make wine from. And when we, on the export side, um, nearly half, half, I'll allude to the next slide, but half of our produce is exported. But we're only about 4% of world exports, um, a value of about 9 billion rand, just over it actually. And then we make a 36 billion contribution to the GDP of South Africa. And then typically, we spoke about the size of, um, of the buyers. So typically, I was a size demographic of our producers on the left. As you can see, that um, 
More than 50% of our producers are, produce less than 500 tons annually. And then the composition of our harvest, we've got a bit more white grapes than we've got red. And typically, obviously, in the red and white varietals, um, red varietals have got the distinct capacity that they can age quite well over time, where white one, white one can cannot. Going to wine market, so um, local versus exports. Um, over time, we, we have become a slightly more, you'll see we've got a local export market nearly 50-50. Um, and then yes, and so, and we produce about 980 million liters, and um, which poses opportunities and challenges um, with the, the, down, the downside in supply internationally the last two years. And this year of drought conditions of us, obviously we've got a very big market locally, which, which, which um, gives price support actually of us with a drought on a, on a local and international level. Then, um, yeah, I've introduced to, so I'll get to the production later and to that. So in the wine market, so we talk about 9.1 billion rand, um, the value of our exports. Um, so what's nice to see for us as an industry is that um, the value of our exports have increased, although the volume we do export has, has gone down. And, um, and typically, on our left, at the bottom, you can see is typically at price points, we are trading for higher. Um, some of your speakers actually made, a, made an introduction. It's nice, South African wine, you get good quality. It's very affordable. Um, but yes, we would like to reposition ourselves um, and, and go for higher price points, which we, we, we can deliver the quality. Um, if anyone knows, know, in, in, in the venue knows that um, Tim Atkins is a very well-known um, wine critic, and he actually um, gave one of our producers in Stellenbosch, Canon Kop, a perfect 100 scoring. And it was a first, first for South Africa, so we can produce top quality wines that can compete to the, the best, best of the world. And then if you look at the export focus markets, obviously we're also very um, reliant on the old world countries, the UK, Germany, the Netherlands, and um, then some of our smaller markets um, is also listed there. We are actually at the moment seeing um, negative growth in the US and North America and then China. Um, but yes, they're also big markets for us, focus for us. And then the top exporter varietals are on the bottom, this right on part here. And that it's going to be a bit small to see from there, but obviously Cabernet Sauvignon, Sauvignon Blanc is up there. What's nice to see in that variety is Chenin Blanc is a very big cultivar for us, um, produced locally as well. And we've actually seen very good growth in volume and, and, and rand value in that cultivar, and it's easy drinking white wine, so that's very nice for us to see. And obviously at the end, second last from bottom is just above Merlot, is Pinotage as well, which is the proudest of African cultivar. Geographically, we is, is a wine producer of Africa, um, similar with the table grape industry, and citrus, we've got some of the production, about 4,000 hectares in the Northern Cape, but the bulk of this, of, of the industry is, is also um, in the Western Cape, and it's just the demographic of the regions with district terroirs and wine styles um, actually also originating from them. And yes, so our biggest, um, so you are currently in Stellenbosch, as alluded to, and within our wine of origin district or statistical district, we actually got the, the Cape Town area also falling in there. Okay, so area under wine grapes. Um, so we've had challenges on sustainability for the last couple of years, since the early 2000s. Um, so the area under wine grapes has declined drastically in South Africa. Um, and uh, we're currently now with the drought. So we, we started about just under 100,000 um, hectares in 2008, where we're now currently at about 92,000 hectares with uprootings um, clearly surpassing um, plantings, especially since 20, 2016. Um, so our industry is getting smaller uh, in area wise. Um, and we can go into the next slide. And then, although it's been getting smaller, um, our producers have been able to, to keep our production for quite a few years up there, and actually the production hasn't decreased, and actually been stable up until 2017. As, as most of the um, colleagues of the persons attending here would know, South Africa, and especially the Western Cape, has been faced by drought, um, which affected not only the wine industry, but a lot of fruit industries in 2017, 2018, and 2019, especially. Um, and also, also with that, the drought being a perennial crop, we had a devastating effect on some areas. We had had water this year, but um, our vines took a great knock. So we're actually expecting, we had a 15% drop in the size of our harvest in 2018. We're actually expecting it, if it's going to be the same size, we're hoping for that, it might even be smaller. 
and we'll know, know that figures within the next three weeks. But nonetheless, so there is a big drop in, 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 in the size of our crop. And then apart from the industry getting smaller, our industry is also aging. Um, perennial crops is a, is a capital intensive investment. Typically, we, we, we're looking at economic life cycle about 20 years. And, and unfortunately, it takes a lot of um, investment to um, establish this. And, um, and yes, so you have to be able to, to farm it out. But nonetheless, we do a, a benchmarking exercise, which I'm responsible for as well. Um, which about 30% of our industry um, take part in. And we could also see in within this, this group, so our, we've been aging over time. So the blue area is your, your vines under three years of age. So typically, within the first three years, you'll, you'll be getting your, your vines in nearly into full production. So first two years, sometimes you don't have this at all. Third year, it gets into production. And then the green area is your, your vines that's getting to nice into production. It's four to seven years, it's indicated by green. And with a gray area in the middle, that is a main factory from where our grapes must come. And um, as you guys can see as well, over time, it has, it has decreased in size, which is concerning for us. But not just that, the oldest component of our vineyards, which gets mar marginally less productive over time, um, has also um, aged more. So, so yes, yeah, so that's, that's concerning for us to see. Ideally, we would want about 15% in the blue area there, and we would like less than 15% at the top. So yeah, to, to get over to the economics, so that's, as a culture economist, typically where I am. So like other commodities as well, the wine industry are, are cyclical. Um, typically we're looking at a, at a seven to 10 year cycle. Um, so we had in the early 90s after we, the, the end of apartheid and um, the opening of sanctions, we had a very big spurt into guys planting more vines. Over time, our producers can farm, we planted a, a lot of wine. Internationally, there was also some trends playing in. But we had an oversupply period, so we got a peak. And then, as oversupply worsened, our producers are slower to adapt, typically. And we've been alluding to a lot of citrus and other crops being planted, and instead of wine at this stage of the game. But nonetheless, um, we've definitely um, come past the, the bottom of it. We've actually seen prices increasing, and definitely a few better years for the wine industry going forward. Um, but we can also say that it is not going to be as long as the, the, the downside. The upside is going to be shorter, but at least we, we can see a few better years uh, ahead of us. And um, we can also look at the South African citrus industry. Um, they were in a similar situation about 15 years ago um, when we were now. So, yes. And then on a sustainability level, um, it's good to see that we are producers sustainably has improved over, over, over the last year, especially. But we are concerned that more than 80% of our wine producers are farming below a sustainable net farm income which we, we put at 35,000 a hectare. Um, this is based on a, a calculation on, on what an entrepreneur must be able to take from the farm. Um, this, is, this is before, um, before, um, yeah, before that and, and, and before entrepreneurial preparation, before um, um, obligations in terms of interest and tax, and also um, before, obviously, um, for your own capital that's invested. But nonetheless, it's, it's calculated basically based on the, the underlying asset, and also we, we want to look at a return of at least inflation plus 5%. So that's what it's based on. And it's great to see that over time, our net farm income has, has more than doubled, but we are all where we want to be. Obviously, wine grape cultivation is also less uh, management intensive than a lot of your other fruit types. So, so yes, we, there is opportunity costs. Some producers will nonetheless, we're not gonna per se be, be on par with a lot of other fruit types, but it takes different um, infrastructure and outlay in, in a producer to cultivate some of your very labor and um, technically intensive fruit, fruiting varieties. So yes, yeah, so we've lost nearly a thousand producers over the last um, 10 years, over the last decade. Uh, we've seen about 9,000 farm hectares that's been, been culled. And as I just alluded to, other industries are providing a better investment. However, um, we saw a very big um, structural price correction in the value chain. Um, and we started to tighten local, local and global wine supplies, which we're grateful for. And we also see that trend is actually playing through um, for our producers this year as well. So this is going to be my last part, just to know who is the wine industry, how do we fit in, who is Vimpro. So organizationally, Vimpro is on the left. Um, presenting um, wine producers, sellers, estates, and associated members. In the middle, we've got a National Agricultural Marketing Council, um, which promotes market access for SA agriculture. We've got, we've got a transformation unit in the middle. 
And on the right, we've got Silva, which actually produce, uh, represents manufacturers and distributors. Um, a buyer, you can say as well, and the Stel and DGB is one of the big ones there as well. At the bottom, we've got uh, Parasitol or Service, which is responsible for our statistics, uh, wine origin scheme. We've got Winetech, which is a levy funded body by, by producers and, and Salba, which is responsible for research and technology transfer. And um, we've got Woza, which is a generic capacity builder uh, for brands of Africa and wine. And um, yes, um, so that's how, how we fit into each other. And Vimpro, um, where I'm from, so I preluded to, we represent the wine industry. Um, so that's the, the producers we represent. Um, we are a non-profit company with a debundling of KWV and the marketing council back in the day. We, we did, did get an amount for profit income and revenue, but nonetheless, um, so that's where our income comes from. We do consultation and we, we do some products. So our core objectives, I'm not gonna allude much to it, it's on, on, on the slide. And our core focus areas, so typically one, um, with it being a syntax and stuff, is a lot of work we do on advocacy level. We've got specialized products, which I'll, we'll show in the next slide as well. A big capacity building, we want to do an information transfer, and we want to do people development and transformation. We want to see a healthy um, wine industry, although it will be, be, be small in the, in the future, we do foresee it's going to be a more, more value-adding one. So just to, to end off, who's event for fam family? I alluded to Vetitech in the beginning, which is our nursery development part. They propagate about 3,000 um, vines annually, um, which they distribute um, to a lot of other vine growers as well. Um, so that's Vetitech. WineMS, we've actually got an ERP seller system software as well, which we've got 85% of the shares. And um, yes, to, to just to end off, um, so that's the division we've got. And on a plant um, pathologic level, and for, for you guys, for breeder level, our biggest um, challenges in the industry is um, row leaf, uh, amongst other Shiraz um, diseases and a lot of virus um, diseases that's actually also, um, I can say they're also transported by, by, by vector or millibug. Typically, which you also get with citrus, you get this Asian greening disease or CLB, and it's devastating for vines. So if you do go out within the next two, three weeks, you'll actually see a lot of vines in the Salamosh re region, nice autumn colors. Um, but a lot of those vines are actually virus infected and it um, produces the productivity of our vines, so that's a big concern. And um, yes, so that's, and that's just some of the diseases we've got, but um, nonetheless, that's all from our side, so, so thank you.